Welcome to the C-Suite Mentor, the place where you will learn the tools, strategies, and mindset to scale your business sustainably and build a lasting legacy. I'm your host, Teresa Cantley. As a fellow CEO, I understand what it takes to scale a business to seven and multiple eight figures. It's not necessarily what you might think. It requires a complete shift in how you think, strategize, and execute key actions in your business. My mission is to help CEOs step back into the driver's seat of their business by optimizing their operations, empowering their team, and staying in total alignment with their big vision. So, are you ready to exchange everything that hasn't worked for strategies that will? You're in the right place, so let's go. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the C-Suite Mentor Podcast. I decided to record this. I was actually supposed to talk about something completely different, and I decided to record and do this episode different than other episodes that I have done where I'm teaching you something or um, talking about an insight that I have into helping you to be a better leader, to build a better team, and to also um, improve your culture, build a better culture. And this one I'm going to do a little bit differently because I'm going to talk about my own experience and things that have happened this year and things that I've struggled with myself and also seeds that I've planted. Because oftentimes we either hear about, you know, we either hear about all these success stories and things that are going on and or we hear like just about what's happening out in in the world and how it might be challenging and how you can navigate it but i wanted to just be real with you uh and really tell you a little bit about what i'm going through and also what i've been helping to help some of my clients navigate but more for my own situation because if i'm struggling with this then more than likely there's somebody out there who is potentially struggling with the same thing maybe you're struggling with the same thing i know a lot of people went into 2024 and being like this is an amazing year it's year of the dragon i know that was me it's the year of the dragon that is the year that i was born it is my sign i'm good and right now today i am sitting here with a stress fracture in my foot no clue how it happened but if you are into energy and you are into any of that like woo woo stuff which i am you know that your feet that is foundation so if something is cracked it's foundation if your back hurts it's foundation so something's rocking it and again which is why i wanted to talk about it and i was recently i was at a show with a client of mine and just the conversations that i've had with vendors that were there it was just a lot of like fear and scarcity and and just talking about how it's been so hard this year and whether it was vendors and actually other people who own retail stores just about the you know how it's they were just having not the year that they wanted to have and just really unsure of what the next steps are going to be so again i wanted to share this more from my perspective i am a mentor i am a coach but i am also not and i've built many businesses I have coached people who are just starting, who have an idea and then taking it to, to launch and getting them to launch their business and be successful. I have worked with business owners who are seasoned business owners and they've been in business for several years. I've been in business myself since 2008, but that doesn't mean, and if anybody out there, any business ex experts that are out there tell you differently, they're wrong. It doesn't mean that you're immune to it. No one is immune to setbacks and challenges and and things not going right no one's immune to it it happens it's part of the journey but also not a lot of people want to talk about it they don't necessarily want to talk about things that were missteps or things that were failures and you know misjudging an opportunity which i want to talk about some of these things today because again if i'm struggling with this or i've struggled with it there are other people out there that have too and i think the one thing that I realized, and I actually took a note this morning on my phone and I wrote it down, is that when I create content, when I put things out there over the years, because I've been doing this since 2008, over the years, I have been transparent about some of the challenges that I have, I've had. And for a while, I was afraid to share it because I thought, oh my God, people, like, what, what are people going to think about me? 
And the truth is, I don't want to hold back from being me and putting my insights and my stories and and my challenges and just being real with anybody who's listening. You know, I don't want to risk not doing that. And when I'm putting this stuff out and people are learning from it, I don't want to risk somebody not learning something that they need to learn because I was afraid to put it out myself. So I heard something this morning, I was listening to a podcast and I thought, you know what, let's do this. Let's put this out there. Let's talk about the challenges, but then also seeds that were planted. And if you are going through challenges or this year has not turned out the way that you wanted it to, because again, we could have the best laid plans and we could have the best strategy ever, but ultimately we don't have control over the outcome. We just have control over what we, the actions that we put into it and the steps that we take. And outside of that, we don't have control over the outcome that happens. So if you have experienced the first quarter not being the way that you wanted it to go, you're not alone. And I also want you to look at, because so often we look at the things that we haven't accomplished or things that haven't worked, and we forget what really did work or the steps that we did take or really how far we did come. Um, And I know it sounds kind of cliche and everything, but it's really true. I know it's true for myself because I am one of those high achievers, high performers. And a lot of times I forget the actions that I did take and the growth that I did have. And I think it's a common theme I think it's it's common with people, especially if you're an entrepreneur, because we're constantly looking at how can we make things better? How can we grow? How can we more, make more people? How can we achieve more? And I think, like I said, I am not immune to this. And I said to uh, my social media person the one day, someone said, oh, well, you need a highly curated feed. And she said, well, Teresa, maybe we should change stuff because you need this really pretty feed. And I was like, no, I don't, because that's not me. <laughs> Most of the time, uh, I'm a little bit of a train wreck, but that's okay. That's okay. Makes me me, right? So, but again, the best thing that we can do is set the stage, put the lay the bricks, put the the plans in place, plant the seeds, whatever it takes to continue to move forward. And just like a tree, I'm looking at a tree outside my office window. We can't see the tree grow, but we just know that the tree is growing. So this is the same thing. As long as we water it and we take care of it, and we keep the soil healthy, the tree is going to continue to grow. But as soon as we change any of those things, the tree is going to start to have issues, right? So it's the same thing with us. As long as we continue to nurture ourselves, the environment that we're in, what happens in between our own two ears, the more we will grow, the more things will grow, and they will change. And no matter what happens, no matter what storm comes your way, doesn't blow over the tree necessarily unless the tree is weak. Just like you don't know what kind of storms are going to come your way. So the more, and and when storms come, we just have to roll with it. We have to learn how to avoid the obstacles and keep going because the storm's not going to last forever, right? So I wrote this this morning that I've been putting out content a long time. And especially when it comes to the podcast where we're having a real conversation, just like we're having a cup of coffee, which I'm actually having a cup of tea. I'm really documenting my journey, my journey into that self-development of learning that I am worthy because of who I am, not because of what I do. What I do and how well I do it is a product of who I am. But my worthiness comes from connecting to who I am which is something that I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs get away from. They lose that connection to self because they end up getting so focused on their business that whatever happens in their business, they end up making it mean something about them, whether they're worthy or not, rich or not, successful or not, depending on what happens in their business. Instead of connecting to, like I said, the self, And it's very, yeah, I'm going to say every single person I've ever worked with, every single business owner has gone through this. And I think, again, we oftentimes, you know, we start our business, we get in there, we're working at full speed, we just keep driving forward. And along the way, we just end up losing that connection to who we are, to truly who we are. And it really takes a good coach and a good mentor to bring us back to that connection to self, Mm -hmm. that courage to be exactly who we are, that vulnerability 
to say, okay, things aren't going right. We're going to course correct, which I talk about a lot, but I'm, we're not going to talk about this that today. But so when I create content, I do talk a lot about that self, um, that self improvement, that self mastery. So for me, it's it's documenting my own journey on the road to connecting back to who I am, so that I can build a business and show other people what's possible. The other thing that I do is really with my content is I'm trying to document that not everything is going to go right. And that really what it takes to build a business, whether you're a digital business, an online business, or you're a brick and mortar business, what it really takes to build that business, even when you might have failure after failure after failure, and potentially things last for a long period of time. It's that getting back up and keep you just keep moving forward. You keep trying different things. You keep putting yourself out there. You keep saying, okay, like this isn't going to work. I mean, it's a, it's a grand experiment. We all become scientists. When you become an entrepreneur, you just become a business scientist and someone who is willing to explore failure for everything it is and be okay with whatever the outcome is. So that's part of what I'm doing when I'm creating my podcast or I'm putting content out there. I can't say that I've always been really good at it because a lot of times I end up saying, oh, somebody might not like this. So I'm not going to put it out there quite like that. I'm going to really play it safe. But I think moving forward, that's something that, again, there's a lot of people that have started businesses over the past couple of years. There's a lot of people that think that starting a business, you're going to make a million dollars in the first two months. And there's a lot of people that think it's just all going to be roses. And the reality is it's not. So, so I wanted to get into some of the things that happened to me, and I'm going to just talk about the challenges in the beginning of the year in this first quarter. And kind of when I went back and I looked at things, and reviewed what exactly did happen, just how many seeds I planted to really grow an unbelievable garden of opportunity. So in the beginning of the year, I had a very tough 2023, which I've talked about openly. And in the beginning of the year, I set some big goals to achieve in the first quarter, centered around my book, centered around the growth of my business, centered around a potential partnership that I have. And I would missed all of those goals. So of course, what goes through your head is you're like, oh my God, I'm such a failure. Like I didn't achieve the things that I wanted to achieve. I didn't achieve the revenue number. I didn't achieve the impact number that I wanted to make. I missed the target on getting some stuff started as far as writing my leadership book. And it was just kind of, you start to swirl a bit. So I thought about it and my husband and I have conversations all the time about, okay, like, let's look at what really happened. And then, it, like I said, I was listening to a podcast, which actually gave me the inspiration to record this. So I was like, okay, got to record it. So, but here's the other thing. I've sat with a lot of uh, um, clients of mine or fellow entrepreneurs or people that I just have contact with in the community. And I've sat with a lot of them and have heard their stories of challenge. I mean, I had a client and I've talked about this several times who had a fire this year and who had several key people leave his organization in the first month of the year. And in, because of it, as a result, had to switch up a whole bunch, bunch of systems and processes really fast. Um, and then, like I said, the fire happened in the second month of the year. So again, had started off the year with a great plan, an amazing growth strategy to build his business, to really expand and go into, he's one of those people that we've worked heavily on bringing inspiration from outside of his business into his business. And again, we don't have ultimate control over things that just happen. We don't have control over what's going on in the economy. We don't have control over what's going out, going on in our culture with the election and everything surrounding, you know, what's going to happen with that. And we don't have control over things that happen outside of the realm of, you know, this planet, things that God ends up, you know, sending our direction, or the universe sends our direction. But the things that I've learned for myself, I was not planning on missing those revenue targets. I was not planning on missing the the book 
targets that I hit. I was not planning on getting super, super sick. And I definitely was not planning on my foot issue. So, but what I've come to realize, and I've read this so many times in the past three months, that even though it feels like a hard season, even though it feels like it's dark and it's challenging and things aren't going your way, no, and you keep falling down and you keep getting knocked down, even though it feels like that, the truth is, is that it's challenging us because change is coming. It's challenging us because transformation is coming. The change and the transformation that we really need to do things beyond what we ever thought was possible. So when we look at these things, and I know I've caught myself, why is this happening to me? When we look at it, and now that I go back and I look at it and I think to myself, this is setting the foundation for change. It's setting the stage to let go of things that weren't really serving me so that I could open up some, some energy and some space for some new opportunities. So if you're experiencing a season of challenge and struggle and uncertainty and not really knowing, you know, is this going to work? Is this going to be my make or break year in my business? Let's shift that thought and instead start thinking this challenge, this struggle is helping me to change this getting uncomfortable and feeling because I know I've, I've been there myself feeling like just really uncomfortable with some things that are, are going on, whether they're conversations that you need to have or events that are happening, or even just pushing yourself to do something that you've never done before. It feels uncomfortable, but that all of those things are helping us to crack open, to break through and crack open that piece of us, that courage and that vulnerability and that strength that we need to achieve something even beyond what we ever thought was possible. So when I look back, one of the first things that happened for me this year was I made the decision because I was so burned out and stressed out with doing everything. Like I had all these things that I was still doing in my business. One of them was my books and letting go of that, letting go of reconciling those things and saying, cause I, I have an accountant, I've had an accountant forever and saying, okay, I need you to do this. I need you to handle these things now. And being able to let go of that instead of just having a quarterly meeting with him and really stepping in and having him really function as my CFO. And what I ended up finding or that seed that was planted was a potential new way that I could help him with developing a new income stream in his business. And at the same time, he was freeing up space for me to be able to do a lot of things that I wasn't able to do before because I was holding on to the numbers. I was holding on to control over financial decisions that I was making in my business. And I let go of that and embraced, okay, I'm going to have a virtual CFO, a fractional CFO to help me to navigate some of these things. So, which again, led to a potential new way that I'm able to help him with a new income stream because I ended up being the test, the beta version for this new income stream for this fractional CFO and this bookkeeping offer. Um, I ended up being the beta for it. And what that ended up happening was he was helping me with what I needed help with, but I was also helping him to define processes for onboarding new clients, processes for that customer experience and dealing with people and, and bookkeeping every single day, which is actually going to be a lucrative income stream for him outside of just doing taxes on a regular basis. So that was number one. Number two was I was chasing opportunities that I just wanted so bad. And the opportunities that I was chasing, whether it be different clients, whether it be a new income stream for a DIY program was actually, it was actually something that I was working on a, a toolkit. And I was, I kept chasing these opportunities and, you know, clients that were super high maintenance and super low revenue as well as trying to build out a DIY program that I've built out many times over before and just consistently having it not work and consistently thinking it was something that I was doing. And what I ended up finding was that that's not necessarily, first of all, chasing 
people who aren't willing to do the work is not the best use of your time, nor your skills, nor your energy. Chasing, whether it's employees, if you are looking to develop and elevate employees in your business and they are just not stepping up to it, they might not be the right person for the role. Just like if you have clients that you're working with and they're not willing to do the work or they're not willing to step up and take ownership and responsibility and accountability, they're not worth chasing. And it took me a long time to figure that out, a very long time. So what I ended up finding is that I needed to really step into and connect back to my strength, which is working with people one-on-one -on -one in their business with their teams, letting go of the idea that I needed to build a DIY program, which again, I've probably built several over the past several years and never had the, the kind of success I wanted to have as I did with the one-on-one -on -one work and the mastermind. So the thing that I found is I'm going to be relaunching my local business mastermind that I had launched several months ago. I'm going to be relaunching it in the next month or so. So stay tuned for that because that's really, I mean, I love building businesses. I love every single facet of it, whether it is strategy or process design, building your team, building your culture, leadership. I am, I have always been obsessed with people's stories and figuring out how things work and understanding it. So leaning into that, whether it be the regular consulting that I do, the one-on-one -on -one consulting or the mastermind that I'm building or the potential investing in businesses that I'm, that is also kind of out there. It's been, it's been pitched to me and who knows, who knows what's going to happen with it, but I'm going to just kind of keep that door open um, because God presented it. The third thing is, is that I ended up two times I've had conversations with friends who I knew were really busy speaking gigs, traveling all over the world. And I didn't really want to bother them, but I was struggling with something in my business. I was struggling with something that I needed to get some help on. And some of it was around team. Some of it was just around the direction again, where God was presenting something to me and I was afraid to step into it and to answer that call. And once I embraced it and said, okay, this is uncomfortable. I am uncertain about it, but I'm going to be open to it. So I ended up reaching out to two separate friends, two different things. And what both of them said was, Teresa, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you make the ask? Why didn't you, if, you know, we're friends and if I can't have a conversation with you, I'll let you know, but I'm always open to have a conversation with you. And what they reminded me is, is that I've always been the person that is there to help and serve and support and answer questions about anything, whether it's whether or not to dissolve a partnership or whether or not to hire a new marketing person or a marketing agency, or just whether or not to move in a certain direction that feels uncomfortable. So they said, why wouldn't we be there for you? And what that led to was building out a peer mastermind with one of them, with one of my friends that I am so excited because I've been introduced to four amazing women who have strengths that are complementary to what I do, which is only going to help improve the value that I'm delivering. And also I can deliver value to their audiences that I wasn't connected to before. So the other one was a conversation with someone who, a friend of mine who I've known for a very long time, who I was actually talking to her about something that I was struggling with the book. And she said, Teresa, you need to do the book proposal first. I got, a, I got someone for you. Lo and behold, I ended up getting connected to an amazing woman who is helping me write the book proposal. I have my book laid out and I'm off and running Whereas before I was stop and start and stop and start and stop and start. And what I realized is all I needed to do was make the ask and reach out. And actually a third thing, a third friend that I reached out to was a woman. I was a score mentor for several years and I actually had to let it go because I had so many people I was mentoring through score. I couldn't keep up with all of my meetings and appointments. So I had to let it go, but I still am an expert, um, a subject matter expert with them. But I ended up reaching out to the woman who's the head of the chapter and said, Hey, Linda, like, can I have a cup of coffee with you? And just wanted to talk through some things, met with her, shared some laughs, you know, just connected again. And what 
ended up coming out of that was the ability for me to potentially do some more speaking engagements with SCORE to to teach people about building a business, to teach people how to navigate, you know, what's happening in the economy and how you can develop, you know, develop some thing, put some insulation around your business, whether it be with people or processes or profits to make sure that you can weather any storm. And something I was never really, never really even thinking about, but this, again, this opportunity is there. And it's not like I said yes to, to all of it, but it was like, you know what, it's there. It's out there, it's there. I've sent some preliminary information, so who knows? But at least I opened the door. And the last thing was just kind of working through a lot of what happened and thinking, oh my gosh, like this year is gonna tank. And going through that and going through that process of saying, okay, how can I shift my thinking about this? How can I shift and really lean into all of the things that I teach to other people to navigate challenge and uncertainty and all of these things. How can I really lean into that, give myself some grace and space and just just kind of be open to the answers that come? And what came from that was me really digging in and writing this book. So if you've been faced with challenges this year, I encourage you, I mean, first of all, you're not alone, but I also encourage you to go back and look at the seeds that you've already planted. This year I set out to, I we completely revamped my strategy. I had to shift some things on my team and I had to shift some things in my schedule to plant the seeds for great opportunities to come my way. Opportunities that I didn't even know were there, asks that I didn't even know were possible so that I could start like, I mean, seeing opportunities that I would have never dreamed of that are potentially coming my way. So again, I encourage you to, first of all, number one, look at what you're chasing. And if you are focusing on things in your business that just aren't working, that haven't worked year after year after year, look at them and ask yourself, can we make them better? Can we tweak them? Or is it something that we need to let go of? I also encourage you to reach out and make the ask. Ask for help. Ask for Just put something out there to somebody that maybe you've wanted to work with or something you've wanted to do and just put it out there because you never know what the answer is going to be. And I also encourage you to look at things and say, what am I holding on to? What am I holding so tight and want to be in control over? And it really, it's not really something that's, that's serving my highest and greatest good. And potentially I have a resource that can help me with that to lighten up what I'm doing so that I can really focus on my unique genius, which might be creating content, or it might be, you know, doing sales, or it could be doing marketing, whatever it is in your business. It could just be delivering speeches, getting out there and and speaking, or creating a new income stream, creating a new revenue stream, whatever it is, freeing up space and letting go of that control and surrounding yourself with really, really good people, really good people that can challenge you to think bigger, to really lean into your dreams, to really look failure in the face and say, not today, I got this. And to just change, just change the narrative around, you know, when things don't work out right. So like I said, this is a little bit of a different episode. Thank you to the stress fracture in my foot and realizing that we need to focus on foundation, not just growth, but foundation. Because when we have a strong foundation, we're able to grow tall. When we plant the seeds and we water the soil and we take care of the soil and we feed it and we nurture it, we can grow even bigger than we thought possible. So I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you soon. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Hey there. Thank you so much for listening. If you found value on the show, please follow the podcast so you never, ever miss an episode. And I would love, love, love if you would leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify for me. Even better, share the show with a fellow business owner ready to step fully into their CEO leadership role. Because right now, more than ever, the world really needs next level leaders. And by the way, did you know you can text me all your questions and get real-time feedback? You absolutely can. Just text the word CEO to me at 610-215-2838 to get connected. 
one last goodie for you before I go. If you're ready to scale your business and have a co-creator working right by your side, my C-suite mentor program may be perfect for you and your possible new second in command. Just visit the c to get started.